Assalamu alaikum, second year. We are going to start seeing this specifically with the sensory system. So the central nervous system, we have the motor system and sensory system. We will start with the sensory system and shortly in uh, about two weeks, you will be starting with the motor system. So the first thing I would like you to think about is why to study the nervous system as a medical student? Do you need it today at this time in this year as a medical student? Do you need it? Do you need the physiology of nervous system afterwards as a doctor? So I want you to think about that. According to the UHS assessment, the nervous system, this is the wedge of the nervous system. There are about 12 MCQs in your final professional exam, and there are two short SQs. This shows you how important is the nervous system and the weightage it carries. So we will start with the sensory nervous system. What does the sensory nervous system do? From this diagram, what does the sensory nervous system do? Think about it. Okay, I'm sure you know the answer by now. So we have about 15 lectures for sensory system, three for receptors, four for synapses, three for sensory pathways, one for sensory cortex, and then four lectures for pain and thermal sensations. It's a little bit difficult system if you don't follow the lectures. If you follow the lectures, if you study along with the lectures, it's going to be extremely easy. One thing I want to clarify is that in Guyton, you have the chapters 46 and 47 in the edition, 13th edition. If you have different edition, you will have different numbers of chapters. That's fine. So in these chapters, there is an overlap between receptors and synapses. They're not in order. So we are going to do it in order and nothing to worry about. I'm going to tell you even the exact pages so that you're not confused. So in this lecture, we are going to do receptors. And this is our first lecture on receptors. Reading materials, chapter 47, guide in 13th edition. You have different edition. There will be different pages. And you can find it easily. We are covering also Ganong, chapter 8, which is about receptors. Uh, this is related to the first three lectures on receptors. You can also have a look at Mushtaq Physiology Volume 2 in relation to the topic sensory receptors. However, this is our main concern. Mushtaq Physiologist edition, if you would like to have a look at it. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to define and classify receptors. This is important for MCQs as well as by Viva Bosi. So from your previous knowledge, what do you think? What are receptors? How would you define receptors? What is the meaning of receptors? What does it do? I'm sure you're already thinking about it. Yes, receptors convert stimulus, external stimulus into action potential. So whatever is the stimulus that is perceived by the receptors, it is converted into action potential. So they are specialized transducers. Transducers means something that converts something into another. So they are specialized transducers which convert the external stimuli into action potentials. You might have some idea about some names of receptors you have done in your previous studies, maybe in FSC, AO levels. Any receptors you can think of you might have heard of Meissner's corpuscles, Cassinian corpuscles, Merkel's discs, maybe. So I'm sure you have some idea about some of the receptors, but let's do the detailed classifications of receptors. This is from Gaito. So in general, we have five categories of receptors in this type of classification. Mechanoreceptors, thermoreceptors, nociceptors, electromagnetic receptors, and chemoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors that are responsible for mechanical type of sensations, touch, pressure, vibrations, and sensations related to this type of uh, sensations. Mechanoreceptors are further classified into 
Superficial skin tactile receptors. These receptors are present in the superficial layers of the skin. You have deep tissue receptors, which are present in the deeper layers of the skin, as well as the deeper tissues like joints, uh, muscles. You have also the hearing receptors, cochlea, the cochlear receptors. You have the equilibrium receptors, vestibular receptors, and you have the blood pressure receptors, which you have done in first year, and I'm sure you remember their names. What are the uh, blood pressure receptors? Yes, baroreceptors. So we start with the superficial skin tactile receptors. Here you need to remember the type of sensation it perceives. So we have the free nerve endings, which are present in the superficial as well as in the deeper layers of the skin. And regarding the mechanoreceptors, they are responsible for the sensation of touch. However, free nerve endings are also involved with other types of sensations. But when we talk about mechanoreceptors, free nerve endings are involved in perception of touch. They are present in the superficial skin layers as well as in the deeper layers. You have the Merkel's discs, and you need to remember Merkel's discs are responsible for sustained touch and pressure. Important to remember, Merkel's discs are responsible for sustained touch and pressure. They are also present in the superficial layers of the skin as well as in the deeper layers of the skin. You have then Rofini's receptors that spray like they're responsible for sustained pressure and they're present in the superficial as well as the deeper layers of the skin. Then comes the encapsulated receptors. Encapsulated receptors in the superficial skin layers, we have the Meissner's and Croce's bulbs. They are responsible for slow vibrations, texture and slow vibration. This is important to remember. Meissner's corpuscles are in the superficial layers of the skin and they are responsible for slow vibrations. Then you have, uh, in the skin, you have the hair end organs, and these are responsible for touch. They are type of the mechanoreceptors as well. The deep tissue mechanoreceptors, you have, as we mentioned, that free nerve endings for touch, marker discs for sustained touch and pressure, and rofinize spray endings, they are, for, which are for the sustained pressure. These three categories are present both in the superficial tactile skin, as well as they're also in the deep tissues. The encapsulated in the deeper tissues of the skin, deeper, in the deeper layers of the skin, we have the bacinian corpuscles, which are responsible for pressure, deep pressure, as well as fast vibrations. And these, they come in MCQs. Meissner's are responsible for slow vibrations. They are in the superficial layers of the skin. The senior corpuses are responsible for fast vibrations and they are in the deeper layers of the skin. Marcus discs are responsible for sustained touch and pressure. In the deeper tissues, you have muscle spindle and Golgi tendon organs, which you will do in the motor system, inshallah. So you have both, we say the superficial, uh, the tactile skin receptors as well as the deep tissue receptors. I'm giving you this for visual learning. Remember, Meissner's, they are superficial for slow vibrations. Asenian, they are deep and they are for fast vibrations. Rofini and Mercus discs are in both superficial layers as well as in the deeper layers. Mercus for sustained touch and pressure, Rofini for sustained pressure. So this is just a summary of the first two classes of mechanoreceptors. These are some diagrams. Free nerve endings looks like this, just to have an idea. Now, this is the expanded tip receptors. Their other name is, you need to remember, Merkel's discs. Now, there is a question. Is it adapting or non-adapting receptor? And I have given you a hint here that Merkel's discs are responsible for sustained touch and pressure. Adapting or non-adapting type of receptors. And the hint is in the word sustained. It's not just for touch and pressure. They are for sustained touch and pressure. Which receptors? Merkel's disc. So the question is, are they adapting receptors or non-adapting? Think about it. Receptors that are responsible for which sensations we mentioned. If you remember, while you're watching the video, start, uh, do say the answer so that it's a good learning for you. Yes, sustained pressure. 
And then you have the um, encapsulated receptors in which you have the bacillin in the deeper tissues, the mesners are mesners and crosses in the superficial tissues, bacillin for which sensations, mesners for slow vibrations. In the superficial layers of the skin, you have the hair end organ, and in the deeper layers, you have the Golgi tendon organ and muscle skin. This diagram, I want you to have a look at this only and this. Remember, visual learning. Measners are superficial, encapsulated. Pacinian are deep, and they are also encapsulated. Whereas, Mercus and Rocconis are present in the superficial as well as in the deeper layers. Other mechanoreceptors are cochlear receptors for hearing the sound. They perceive the sound vibrations. Then we have the vestibular receptors for equilibrium, and we have the blood pressure receptors the stretch receptors of blood pressure when there are when there is change in the blood pressure they are the baroreceptors we have the thermoreceptors thermoreceptors are the cold and warmth receptors we will do them in details nociceptors are pain receptors for insecure very important free nerve endings are nociceptors of course free nerve endings are also responsible for touch as we mentioned mechanoreceptors however when we talk about pain receptors so pain receptors there are no pain receptors except free nerve endings. So this is you need to remember. You get in the MCQs receptors for pain, multiple options, so you will always choose free nerve endings. Then we have the electromagnetic receptors of the retina. You will do them in gels in special senses, inshallah, in the eye unit. And these are the rods and horns. Then we have the chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are the receptors which are stimulated by chemical substances, for example, food, and whatever it contains stimulates the taste buds. Olfactory epithelium, they are the chemoreceptors of the nose. You have the osmoreceptors. Osmoreceptors you have done in the renal physiology, which sends sodium, the osmolarity level, they are in the hypothalamus. You have the carbon dioxide and oxygen receptors you have done in respiration first year they sense the level of carbon dioxide and oxygen and respond accordingly. You have also the glucose, amino acids, fatty acids receptors. So this is the uh, classification that you really need to know. It comes in MCQs and also during viva, you can be asked during viva dosing. So uh, that was the classification from Gaitin. Now there is another classification about two paragraphs in Ganon in chapter eight. I would like you to open your Ganon and, or if you have it online, you have some soft copy, just open chapter eight, which are, uh, which is uh, the title as sensory receptors and just have a read, do read, teleceptors, exteroceptors, interoceptors, proprioceptors, read it, have an idea about what are these receptors. This is as homework. You don't have to submit it, just go through it, type of self-study. Just to have an idea about different classification of receptors. You have your mobiles with you now, so I would like you to Google the egodome receptors. Actually, egodome receptors are type of some receptor we have done before. It is the same as a receptor that we have done before, but the, this receptor when it gets together with, uh, when it's in a group, it's called as egodome receptor. So I would like you to Google what is egodome receptor, which receptor forms it, and what is its function. So please have a look at it, Google it, and share the answer. So can you define and classify receptors? This is, as I mentioned, important for MCQs. Thank you. And if you have any questions, we will discuss inshallah in the live lecture, inshallah face-to-face -face lecture next week. Thank you.